Jack says he has too many. However, the sound is a little low. Great to see you again. Uh, is that any better, Adeloise? It, that puts all my mics in the red, though. I know. Hey, I'm almost in the red. Oh, never mind. I am in the red. One more. Okay. Well, let's see. We'll see what it does. So, uh, last week on the Artistic Biker, we did this little... Uh, why is that so dark? We did this little um, mountainside sunrise. We actually used a photo reference of a house and uh, and some trees and stuff, but I didn't want to put a house on there, so Pamela French said put a... Pamela French said put some mountains on there, so we just reverted to Bob Ross style of putting <laughs> mountains and, sea, and and landscaping in there, but we did did a sunrise and some clouds, and it says if you want a place in the sun, you must first leave the shade. Uh, it was supposed to say if you want a place in the sun, you must first leave the shade of the family tree, but I thought that was kind of tacky. I, I think I think it's good enough just to say if you want a place in the sun, you must first leave the shade. So anyway, uh, during the show last week, though, somebody had asked me uh, to draw some to to uh, do some faces this week, so I thought, you know, I'll. I'll do some faces in the book. Are you going to run in a night all night? No. Okay, you need a pencil. Okay, sorry, sorry. You asked me for a pencil before we started, and I failed to get you one. My bad. Okay, so here we go. Uh, they asked us to do uh, faces, and so we're going to do faces this week. So let's just turn the page and get started. Faces? Yeah, faces. Can you draw faces? No. Why don't you try? I'm not you know how you get better at drawing faces? I'm not good at drawing anime faces. You know how you get better? With the bodies. Do you know how you get better? No. Can you think of Practicing. <gasps> there you go. Look at you. I've Look at my you. Anime. That's fine. I'm gonna draw Chimmy. Uh, where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Your knife? Yeah. Where's my knife? I stuck my knife up here in the box. No, somebody's taking my knife. I couldn't have lost my knife. Somebody took my knife. Like what always happens. It's right there. That's a spoon. It'll work. I found the knife. Spoon! Where's the knife? Right there. Right there. No, that's a palette knife. I'm looking for the butter knife. Hmm. You see the butter knife anywhere? That's a fork. Why is there a fork out here? Why is there a spoon know. out here? I don't know. Uh, we better not use this. Take this in the house. And, the, and the fork, too. Probably someone named Girl, too. And the fork, too. Eating out here with your friends. This is, a, this is so organized. Aren't you glad you tuned in? for this level of organization. Hi, Linda! Aren't you glad you tuned in for this level of organization? I mean, seriously, we might as well be... we might as well be professionals at this point with this level of organization. I mean, it just doesn't get any better. I wonder if Bob Ross ever had to stop his show to find his knife. I don't know. I don't have anything to stir that up with because you took the spoon. <laughs> How about you use that giant I'm going to use my palette knife. Oh, goodness. I don't remember Bob Ross ever having to stop a show for... He never. Not that I could see of. I've watched a lot of Bob Ross over the years. Wait, we're starting now? What do you mean now? We've been started. Oh. Whenever I say, we're, wait, we're starting now, I mean, like, I'll be start drawing? You now? can start if you want to. Okay! I'm gonna draw Jimmy. You want me to show you some quick details on how to draw a face? No, I know how to draw Jimmy's face. Here, let me help you out real quick. From the side. I'm gonna put it on this. So, you're gonna start with an egg shape, right? Kind of an egg shape, with the tip of the egg pointing downward, right? But I gotta make this darker so they can see it on on screen. So you're gonna start with an egg shape. This is just generic face. 
This is not how you draw a likeness. This is how you draw a generic face. And then figure out where halfway between the chin and the top of the crown of the head is, like right about there, right? And then halfway between there and the chin, and then halfway between there and the chin. And what you have are, are the places where the features go. So you put an eye there and an eye there. You put the tip of the nose there and you put the bottom lip there where that line is. See those lines? Yes. I'm jealous. Why are you jealous? Good. You know why I'm good? Yeah, because you've been practicing. Because your mom taught me. For forever. Your mom taught me. Who over there is doing the same exact thing? I know. Just we're farther th th from it. So, there's an example of, of a face. If you, if you want to get better at doing faces, there's an example of a face. Can I borrow your pen instead of a pencil? You can, but you won't be able to correct any mistakes. I know that's why I'm good I like it better. I like it better I with it. I like it better with a pen because then that makes it where it's uh, you, if you don't make have a the mistake. You actually make a better artwork. Did you know that? <laughs> if you make a mistake, you actually make more art. I I can live with that. I can live with that explanation. That's that's kind of what I was going to say. I was going to say when you don't worry about making mistakes, you learn faster. You make the more mistakes you make, the faster you learn. For real? For real? Wait, it's still on me. You didn't learn. You didn't learn how to walk. Thank you for noticing that. You yeah. didn't. You didn't learn how to how to walk by sitting in your by sitting in your pram, not trying not to fall down. You learned how to walk by getting up and falling down and learning how to not do that anymore. You know how you learn to fly? Uh -huh. How? Practice. You throw yourself at the ground and miss. <laughs> but I'm not. I need a so. What are you doing? Nothing. What do you need? An I don't think I have an eraser. Yeah, there's a nylon eraser right there. Oh, thank you. Alright, we got to put a few coats of ground on this this time. So, let me dry this real quick. This is just the, this is just the gesso, the primer part that stops the, the uh, water media from soaking through. You guys remember my house burned down in Oklahoma. We have been very, very fortuitous that not only was nobody hurt and we didn't lose a whole lot of possessions, but the insurance company settled with us and we came out way ahead. I think that's clean living right there. The insurance paid 100%. 100% of the claim. That's just that's just an example. That's just reward for clean living right there let me tell you okay so I have this absorbent ground this golden absorbent ground lets me paint uh, this what this does is it gives anything you paint with it anything you coat with it rather the uh, the properties of watercolor paper so, and I've done this on a, I've done this on a jar. I've taken a, I've taken a glass jar, and uh, applied this to it. It takes at least two coats, but I have taken a, I've 
taken and applied this to a glass jar and then was able to use watercolors on the glass jar. Which I think was pretty cool. So I've enjoyed playing with this stuff. It's, uh, it's from gold and you can get it at Dick Blake, you can get it, I get it at Texas Art Supply. I don't know why Michaels or Hobby Lobby doesn't carry it. I think I think Michaels can probably get it for you. The only reason I use that palette knife is because I used the, the palette knife to stir it up and I didn't want to waste what was on it. I don't want a super thick coat. One, because I don't want it to take that long to dry. And two, because I don't want it to scratch off while I'm working with it. So, we'll go north and south on the first coat and we'll go east and west on the second coat. Other than that, there hasn't really been a whole lot going on here. I mean, the wife and kids came back from Oklahoma Monday, and they've been pretty much sleeping since then. There's no soccer going on. So there really hasn't been a whole lot going on for us. Oh wait. Okay, so you remember me telling you, you remember me telling you about the all the different times we had signs to move out of that house where it was like we got uh, we got an earthquake and then we we had uh, Let's see, what was it? We had an earthquake, we had the roof, Tomatoes. the roof collapsed on us, we had frozen pipes in the backyard, we had frozen Tomatoes. pipes under the house, and then, uh, no, we didn't ever have, have a, we were never hit by a tornado. We had frozen pipes under the house, we were ultimately struck by lightning and it was burned down. So we had all these signs, and kind of like Eddie Murphy said in Delirious all those many years ago, you know, get out, too bad we can't stay. So, but we had all those signs that we ignored and then finally the house just got struck by lightning and burned down. Okay, we were going to go east to west this time. And finally the house got struck by lightning and burned down. And so my mom and dad have been talking about moving to Houston and they were uh, making plans to, to make improvements to their current house so they could sell it. And the other night during the storms, my mom's there was a ground. Uh, there was a lightning struck near him and knocked the circuit board out of her uh, kitchen stove. the The lightning was just enough to knock the circuit out of her kitchen stove and ruin the clock and the way she sets the and she sets the uh, temperature and all that stuff. And she says, "That's my sign. I'm out of here." And so now her and my dad are actively searching the the various real estate websites trying to find a house down here in Houston. <laughs> They said, 
They don't want to live close enough that we feel obligated to come by all the time, but they want to live close enough that we come by all the time. It's tempting to start this too soon. I really should let this cure for eight hours, but I'm not going to. that was funny. She says, that's my sign. I'm out. Here's your sign. I'm out. House for sale. Too bad we can't stay. So she did. She called me up. She says, I did. I got my package, Pamela. I was going to talk to her during what's on your easel. Uh, so she calls me up and she says, you know, I want to I wanna live close enough that I want to live close enough to, uh, that you come see me all the time, but I don't want you. To, I don't want to live close enough that every time you go to the grocery store, you end up going 20 miles out of the way, so that you don't feel guilty about having to stop and talk to me for not for not driving by. What are you working on over there? A chimney. What is it? It's a anime chimney. Chimney uh, or chibi? Chimney. Okay. They're itty bitty warriors. Okay, I don't know anything about anime. And uh. They came with his little tiny pet. Yeah. Okay. I think I might even add his weapon. Fun times. So, who was it last week that asked me to do faces? Does anybody remember? So I'm going to start with the, the basic face. I already, I already did one for uh, Cam over here. I'm going to start with the basic face, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on that because we're not doing we're not doing portraits. We're just doing we're just doing a page full of faces. So we'll start with the basic face. Start off with the egg, and I'm only using I'm using pen like this so that you can see on the screen up there. I drew his weapon. About halfway down, and draw some eyes. Little nose right here. Nothing fancy. About halfway down, about here's the center line across there. About halfway down from there, tip of the nose. About halfway down from there, we'll do a bottom lip. Like that. Ear if you want to. Hair. I like to put a strand there. Make sure that your eyebrows go past your eye. Just simple little faces like that, right? But the beauty of it is if you use a pen that doesn't have waterproof ink, you can come back with, with a brush like this and you can shade it.
Real simple. Real simple faces. Just pull the, just use the water to pull the ink for the shading, and that's that's kind of the premise of what we're going to do. Now this is not dry. The, the uh, ground is still not dry. I noticed if you look at the eyes, you can't see. There's not enough light up there. But if you look closely at the eyes, you'll see that the ground was starting to come up a little bit. So I'm going to have to dry it just a little bit more. Those are the same noises your parents made when you tried to explain a rookie. talking about in chat. We'll see if that's going to work. So when I do this in my... Hi, Rosie Crafter. Rose City Crafter, whose name is Veronica and loves watching your channel. You know, you, the likelihood of me calling you Veronica instead of Rose City Crafter, because Rose City Crafter is such an awesome name. I was making noises when he was explaining anime. Okay, gotcha. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, okay. I gotta pull up my pull up my super secret folder. I have to keep all my have to keep all of my reference photos in my super secret folder so that uh, they don't accidentally come up when I'm at work. That would be an HR nightmare. Nope, it's not that one, it's this one. So I have this slideshow. Do do do. I have this slideshow program where I have, here, let me take a step back. So, well, it's just called Slideshow. It's just the name of it, Slideshow. But I, I have uh, about 12,000 faces on my phone that I have taken off the interwebs. Um, let me see if I can get an example where it is obvious where I might have gotten the picture. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. It would be... A picture like that and she would likely be nude or close to it but I cropped her face and I'm not profiting off of it so I'm not, I can do what I want with it um, but I have about 12,000 different faces that I've that I've cropped and saved to my phone and then I have this slideshow program and I have it set to where every 60 seconds it gives me a new face and so all I'm going to do is click play slideshow from here and I'm going to use this pen and let's let's just draw some faces and I just I just like I said I try to capture them in 60 seconds and it's uh the first few are usually kind of tough because you have to get into the swing of you have to get into the swing of doing it 
and then right when you get into the swing of doing it, you know you're done. The the times the times up for whatever you're doing. I can do this with this with this slideshow thing though. I can do this in my car while I'm waiting for appointments. But eventually I'd like to get better at doing the actual likeness. But for now, I'll settle for getting the, the features in place. We'll just do six or eight of them, I guess. That's about the worst face, the worst mouth ever. But again, the whole idea is to practice. It's process, not not perfection. The the whole reason I'm doing it is because I didn't feel like I was very good at faces, and I wanted to get better. And so, um. Can't talk, Arding. When you've only got 60 seconds, you really don't have time to focus on what you did wrong. When you're done, you can go back and you can you can look at what you did wrong, and you can say, you know, I need to I need to focus more on this and get better at that. And, but when you only have 60 seconds, you know, you have to make your marks. You have to you have to kind of live with what you get. And sometimes you get something really nice, and sometimes you get something you're like, why? I don't even know why I have pencils in my hand. And it's really funny how fast 60 seconds goes by when you're doing this. Tug Harding. You really can't talk, Harding. <laughs> what do we have? We have five? We can do five more. You're only talking five minutes, right? If we can get five more on the page. If I make them too big, we're not going to get five more. So like I said, one of the one of the really nice things about keeping it keeping it to five minutes or keeping it to one minute is you really don't have to worry about detail. You just get in there and try to get as much as as much of what you know. And the, you go back and you evaluate later and you say, okay, this is what this is what I could have done better here, this is what I could have done better here, this is what I I just think this is, I think it's been really great practice.
I use cartoon images because that's something that somebody's already somebody's already rendered that for you to show you how how a simple line drawing it can be. Sometimes I can't even tell it's a face. <laughs> Somebody's, somebody's already rendered this so you can kind of see how it might have been done. And that gives you a little clues to something else you can pick up. The Chimney's pet is like a hedgehog, not like a hedgehog, a hamster mixed with a butterfly and has an anchor with spikes on it, well, wrecking ball with spikes on it. The Chimney himself is a human in his footy pajamas with his sword. Cool beans, kiddo. Thank you. I'm going to go show a girl too. Okay. You go do that. We have all the levels of entertainment here at the Artistic Biker. <laughs> and you're right, him talking to me about chimneys and mangas, just like me. Except my parents know what Wookiees are. My mom introduced me to my mom introduced me to Star Wars. <laughs> It's the picture, not your drawing. You got it right. Yeah, Jack says it's the picture that's wrong, not your drawing. Let's see, this is probably the last one for my set here. Faces at the wrong angle mess with me. Too. Yeah, what she had to say about it. She said, "Oh, that's cute." Oh, that's cute. That was nice of her. She's in anime club. She draws. Anime she draws. She bunch. draws anime all the time. She drew like anime like half of all the shows right here when we were in Texas at our house in our garage. So I'm just using water now to spread the ink. Just to add some shading. Again, every time you do it, you're like, okay, I could have, I could have done this a little better. I could have done that a little better. You just have to focus on what you want to improve, and and you'll get there. I mean, I have a long ways to go. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out how to do a likeness. I want to be able to just sit down at at a party and draw people. And people say, hey, can you draw me? I'm like, sure, I can draw you here. And then next thing you know, all the redheads at the party are want to sleep with me. I mean, uh, because, I, you know, I like art.
think it's neat how adding shading just hi Pensacola Art hi Miss Allie I think it's neat how just adding shading really brings them out and again I'm not right now all I'm using is the ink that's on the paper but look now but look how that ground if we had done this just straight to the gesso the it would all just beat up look how that ground made it spread out like mixed media paper or watercolor paper One more. Now that we have those, we can come back with some watercolor. Uh, Pensacola, I used uh, this time I just used a Uniball Vision Elite. If that will ever come into focus. Why one thing? Oh, because I've got too much stuff underneath it. I used a Uniball, Uniball Vision Elite. And the the ink in the Uniball Vision Elite is not it is is water soluble. It, when it dries, it's kind of when it dries, it's 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 kind of waterproof. Not really very waterproof, but kind of waterproof. But when I do them in my in my book here, I have the uh, this is the the uh, Pilot Metropolitan fountain pen. So when I do them in my book, I use the, the Pilot Metropolitan Fountain Pen. I was afraid because we didn't let the, the uh, absorbent ground dry on the paper cure for eight hours. I was afraid that this would scratch it off. So I went with a ballpoint gel pen instead of a, instead of a fountain pen. So uh, I love my, I love, love, love my Pilot Metropolitan. Not nearly as much as I love my... Uh, Picasso, but I do love my Pilot Metropolitan, and the, my Conklin is my go-to art, my go-to art pen, fountain pen. So I have my handy-dandy little tray of watercolors there. I know it's so easy to get addicted to fountain pens, Jack. It's very easy to get addicted to fountain pens. I got my little brush pen here. And I'm just going to go through and add just a little bit of color to this. Not a lot. I, I, I love I love this look. I love this I love this look, but I'm just going to add just a just a little bit of just a little bit of color to it. That's that's actually more than I wanted to add, but that's fine for that one. We'll just know better next time. For me, The best part of it is, is that they're all gingers. Everybody saw that they were all gingers, right?
Okay, you just add just a little bit of color. You don't have to add too much. You don't have to. You don't have to be too specific because that, to me, that makes it less artistic. It's kind of like what my son was saying a while ago. Less is more. There we go. So you can add just a little bit of color if you like. Should we color them all? I don't know. If we're going to color them all, I'm not using this little brush pen. I'm going to go back to this other brush. You're ordering another you're ordering another Picasso so you can have so you can have one at home and another one just to have just to have in the bag. Be sure if you're going to put it in your bag, Jack, get you one of these little these little leather cases to put it in so that it doesn't scuff up. I carried mine in my pocket with my keys and stuff and you can see that it's scuffed up the outside of it. I don't mind that so much. But it, it does kind of look tacky to other people. You can't even see it. I, you couldn't even see it. But but you can get one of these little leather pouches. Uh, I think we got four of them for eight bucks. And and then that way, when you when you throw it in the bag, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it getting scuffed up. Yes, yes, Pensacola. I did use the. I did use the app thing. Were you the one that asked me to do faces? Were you the one that asked me to do faces last week? The, uh, the reason to subscribe to her anyway, uh, Rose City Crafter is talking in the chat room to Pensacola Art about how there's no videos on your page, but I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to you. The reason to go ahead and subscribe to her is then if she likes a video, it lets you know that she liked the video. It'll tell you what video she what video she likes. So if she sees one of my videos and she likes one of my videos, it'll let you know that she saw one of my videos and liked one of my videos. And then you can go look and see what kind of video that I liked. If she shares that. She may not have her channel set to share. About done with the hair. Pensacola Alley. I'm going to 
come in here and I'm going to get some uh, indigo. Let's really get some darks going in here. Talk, Harding. The we did we did a minute for each sketch, Pensacola. We allowed. Well, I'm in. Uh, we're in talking in the live chat room there. Uh, it was it was one minute it was one minute per sketch one minute per face back to the faces here and Just a hint of color on each one. Where's my green? I need my green there. But I want my green lighter. Add a little more yellow to that green. Because ginger's out of all be emerald eyed I like it that's a good page of faces for me. Rose says she's going to draw with her opposite hand. She's a lefty and she's going to see what her faces will look like as a righty. Thanks for joining me, Jack. Miss Miss Sally asked if Picola was short for Pensacola if I was just or if I was just making it up. <laughs> you know I I've been known to do that. Alright. So Pamela sent in an easel. Let's see what Pamela's easel was. She's the only one I know sent in an easel. So let's see what Pamela's easel was. Give me just a minute. I have to get to the right mailbox. Do, 
Okay, so this is a sculpture I made several years ago. It is white clay with no glaze. The cat contributed to the arm. What were the cat's contributions to the arm? I'm kind of scared to ask. So this is one of Pamela French's sculptures out of white clay. I don't see what the cat did to the arm though. I mean, it's it may be obvious, but I need new glasses. I've got new glasses coming. Let's see. Oh, it's the other arm on the other side. The cat contributed to the other side. There we go. I understand now. And then this is what I'm currently working on. Colored pencil, my granddaughter on her horse, Philly. You know, Philly's probably a really good name for a for a horse. I don't think your drawing looks anything like your granddaughter, though. Looks a lot like Philly. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. So she's working on that with the uh, colored pencils. And, and I'm going to run in the house for just a second. I'm going to make a lot of noise so you can hear me. Because I just got to grab this one thing out of the house. Okay, here I am. I'm back. Don't panic. It wasn't 20 minutes of my boys making arm parts this time. So check this out. My dear friend Pamela French knows that I make my September books out of uh, uh, grocery sacks. And so look at this haul of grocery sacks that she sent me. And I think sending them to me from Brahms is kind of a is kind of a a, a cruel thing to do because there's no Brahms in Houston. But look at what was inside this pile of grocery sacks. Ah! Her matchstick painting that she did based on my show. How awesome is that? So Pamela, thank you very much for this. I didn't I didn't pull everything else out. Was that all that was in there? I didn't pull anything else out. But I'm so I'm so thankful for this because these are gonna make nice, nice, nice books in the in the fall. That's gonna be that's gonna be perfect. I will find some place to hang this because that is gorgeous. And I certainly appreciate it. If you guys would like to be a part of what's on your easel, simply send an email to blade at artisticbiker.com with the picture of what you want to show off and your if you have a website, add your website. I'll I'll share your website too when we share what's on your easel. But uh I really appreciate you guys tuning in this week. Be sure and tune in next week same artistic biker time same artistic biker channel and then we dance we dance until somebody says they see me dancing because dancing is a cool way to end the program and it makes sure that the lag is taken up but I don't think it lags like it used to so I'm not sure that I actually have to do that I think because on the old platform Ustream it would just when you stop broadcasting it would just end regardless of where the lag was so I don't know that that's the case with uh, YouTube <laughs>